Hey, hey, everybody, back again with another one. So, I am going to be doing Buzz Off from He Man this time. And uh, we're going with the new H1 from uh, the 20, uh, what, 2011, 2012 cartoon. I'm going to grab a uh, throw drop here. So, now that we've got that going, I'm going to share it over with the page real quick, and then we're going to knock this bad boy out real fast, and then we got another one back-to-back -back for you with Fisto from the same series, but it's going to be the original version uh, from the classic 80s He-Man, so uh, sharing this over real quick, and there we go, cool deal. Now, this one is a little bit different uh, than the original because of the fact that he has yellow armor, but then he's got this green tinge to it instead of the uh, original brown. So I'm going in with this one, with this bright yellow, and we're going to base coat everything, and then I'm going to come back and do the, uh, the green, uh, the yellow green that goes over it, and then I'm going to go back in with that greenish tone in the segmented stripes so that we can see, like, the chest plate and things like that. All nice and done. But right now we're going to start out with this bright yellow because I want it to have a contrast here. Um, <laughs> Kevin. Mr. Kevin West has made an appearance and put in my Facebook comments the famous He-Man uh, quote, I have the power, and has put it in all caps and run amok in my... Uh, messages so yeah awesome thanks for making it buddy I appreciate it always fun man we gotta get you on and do something with these man uh, you being a fellow artist we've got to get you on doing something at the same time <clears throat> so that we can hang out and uh, chat a little bit and see if we can scream out to the people, see if they're being entertained or not. I think that'd be awesome. Um, preferably not so late, though. So, let's see where I can do this here. Like I said, I'm just base coating this. And I wanted to use the artist loft to get a little practice in with them. So, we're going to have some fun here. I'm going to knock this out. The only bad thing about these artist loft is, like I said, they, they run if you let them, uh, if you break in the brushes and they run, they will run all over the place. They will run amok. But um, they also melt down and wash out that graphite really, really fast. So if you don't do a heavy erasing job, which I didn't do on this one, they tend to grab it and some of the spots will wash out. It get a little muddy. But that's okay, because this being a sketch card, I can do that. And when I coat the green, it'll be forgiven anyway. So, because it's going to be a little muddy because of that green color that I'm going to be putting on it anyhow. So I'm not too concerned, because it's going to be shaded in most of these places that are actually naturally shading because of the fact that I'm getting so close. So I'm all right with it. I mean, as long as it's not like ruining the artwork or anything. It's like, you're ruining it. Nah, not so much. Okay, cool deal. Now, I'm going to go over to this side. Kind of run amok here. This way. I love the flow in these things. They... They paint so quick. So, so quick. All right. Just segment after segment after segment. Which that's awesome, though, because that's the way he's supposed to be colored. You know, um... This guy is 
one of my favorite masters because of the fact that he's so unique. Uh, and it's probably because he's the most least humanoid of all of them. But, I mean, in the 80s, they wanted us to be able to relate to the characters, so they still did, like, the 60s Star Trek style uh, aliens where everybody's humanoid, but you just look different, you know, kind of thing. So I always found that fascinating. And since these chest segments are going to be that dark green anyway, it's okay. Catch a little graphite right in there, which is a spot that I missed so that I wouldn't uh, risk smudging the lines. But it's bleeding in anyway, but that's okay though because like I said on these sketch cards, it's a little more forgiving. Then getting into some of the other stuff where it shouldn't happen at all. Because if I did this with Copics, it wouldn't happen. It wouldn't bleed that much. But that's okay. Because like I said, the texturing is going to take over and it's not going to matter. Cool and deal. Now we have him all mapped out. Hey, Brian. Todd, Gary. Wow. Got lots of people watching. Now, I'm going to go in with this, um, this green, like I talked about. <clears throat> it's kind of a greenish yellow, and I really, really dig it. And over this yellow till it dries, it's going to look kind of muddy at first, but it will dry smooth. I'm very cool and confident with that. Giving a couple of these segments the green treatment like the cartoon. And then we're going to go down here and go on the chest. Actually, I'm going to get that that fang out of there first. I'm going to grab this one as well. Now I'm going to get this chest segment because there's two chest segments here and they both turn green, that greenish color in the new version on the, uh, the newer cartoon from Cartoon Network. Instead of being striped like a bee, he's more segmented for practical uh, contemporary armor. So that's the way we're going with it. And I wanted to draw this one because he has m more dynamics to, uh, to the character itself. It's, it's just a more dynamic piece. But... The funny thing is, when you draw the original, he looks like a, when you draw the original, he looks like a wrestler. And it's not, you know, something that I, I thought looked cool. Um, I enjoyed the original character, and I love the original concept and design, but like I said, it was like that Star Trek model, you know, so everything was kind of contrasted as, <clears throat> you can be alien, but you got to be humanoid in the effect. So, but in this case... We come in like right here in the hand for the forearm and make it look like he's wearing like gauntlets. And that's what the segments color like. It's like he's wearing old school um, forearm gauntlets and um, then wearing chest plates, that kind of thing. So very contrasting. And I forgot to do his upper lip here, which it looks like he has a mustache now because I didn't do that nose segment checking the reference over here. Which, like I said, I don't normally use reference, but in this particular case I did because I want to get these colors right. 
you know, with them being so popular and things, I want to be accurate. But uh, for the most part, I leave it alone because I want to make it, you know, compelling to be unique and whatnot. But for my students that watch and what, uh, whatever. But, uh, <clears throat> you know, at this point, it's a whatever moment, and I'm going to just go as close to the cartoon as I can. But, you know, this, like I said, this is an experiment with these paints and a contrast, so I'm okay with whatever comes out of it. But, uh, if it doesn't look exact and it looks more like the comic book version, that's okay too. I'm all right with that. It doesn't have to be, you know what I mean? Now, I'm going to go with this uh, funky green for his belt here to separate the two. Boom. To divide it a little further. And make it look like it's a separate piece instead of looking like it's him, because that's part of the problem too. They made it look like him. <clears throat> now I'm going to go in with this one as well in this because it's got more of a mint green type of look, and it'll show great for the motion of the wings. Instead of going bright, bright yellow or gray with them, I'm going to do a filament color like they're green. Because if you ever look at a bumblebee, their their wings are that dark brown or green color. And gray uh, doesn't really match into that. However, if you look at uh, something like a, a hornet or a yellow jacket or a wasp, their wings vary in color. And that is a true fact. They vary in color. So we're going to knock this out. Then I'm going to tone up this yellow a little bit with a little bit darker yellow. And not necessarily a, uh, not necessarily the whole uh, green yellow that I did before. I wanted to pop a little bit more, so I'm going to add a little bit more warmth to it. So this will have a little bit of an orange pull to it. It's a Y17. Just kind of want to beef it up a little bit. I'm going to add that into the core of the segments here. So the outer yellow will be a highlight kind of thing going on. And like I said, I just wanted to have a little more contrast, a little more depth. And then we're going to go in with those blue eyes because he's got these uh, bright teal almost kind of blue eyes. I always thought that was neat. And he still kept those in the comic and in the uh, cartoon, the revamp. I thought that was really cool that they kept that coloring for his eyes. So found that very unique to the character. And they left it alone, which was awesome. Okay. I'm going to grab this like that. Keep doing these segments with this inner almost orange type of yellow to contrast. Get my big hand out of the way here so you guys can see. That's going to come out all right. Yeah, I like the newer one too, Kevin. I, I really did. I'm, I'm a fan of it. Um, I liked him. I liked the entire series. I have the whole thing on DVD, which it was short-lived because it was only a season and a half. Now, um, I have a really bright green 12 
which I'm going to use for his teeth. Because they're supposed to be like ridges, not true teeth. I thought that would be cool. And I'm going to go with a super soft bright here. And this blue. It's going to be a little warm. I thought it would give it a great effect for a sky patch. But I'm not going to color the whole thing. I'm going to keep it open. I'm not going to color right up to him like I normally would. I'm going to leave it open a little bit. I'm not going to color right up to the clouds either. I'm going to leave them a little bit of room. And then we're going to call this one done. <clears throat> nice. Okay, cool. Before I call it quits, though, I have decided I'm going to go in with a bright green right on these darker spots. Just to kind of give it a little pop. Because I want those segments to look hard like a shell. Where these look softer and like they're more pliable, like an exoskeleton, I want these to look hardened like they're really going to protect them. I want them to look like protrusions as well. So you got that going on. I'm going to add that as a special effect just to pull it out just a little bit. Toughen it up. Oh, yeah, that looks way better. Kind of giving a little bit of contrast there. Thought that looks really neat. And I'll separate it from that belt down there just a little bit more. And those wings. Kind of pulling it out to look a little more organic. Very cool. Catch that fold right there. Catch the back into that talon. A little bit on these face segments. Just a little. Kind of firm them up a little bit. Just on that one side. Like I said, I want it to look like organic armor. I think that's really cool there. Cool deal. Too bad we can't see that other one because it's behind his arm, but that's okay. That'll work. Okay. With that said, I think I'm going to call it a day on this one. And uh, we're going to leave it alone. And I'll be back shortly with uh, Fisto for the next one. And he did get inked up just right. And uh, as a sneak peek for the next one that I'm doing, I'm not going to show you guys until tomorrow night what it's going to look like done. But uh, you may know this guy, Vader Ray Bill. So that's a little sneak peek. He's in the process of being inked right now for the next segment. Um, not today, now that it's after midnight, but tomorrow. So uh, you guys can keep up on that. I'm going to take a short break. I'm going to erase this one up, clean it up real quick. Now that the ink's set, and we're going to knock him out real quick. And that'll be two for the day. Uh, maybe we'll do another one. Maybe we won't. But at least we'll do this one and knock it out for you. So anyway, this is Buzz Off from He-Man. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for hanging out with me so late. And uh, hope you dig it. As always, with the end of every one of these things, we've got this world for a little bit of time. We get to play around with it and enjoy it. Let's leave it cool for the next generation better than we got it. Take care. Talk to you in a few.